Hello, friends. Welcome to today's Sound Design Thursday. Today, I'm going to show you how you can improve your sound design skills 100% for free using only the things you already have. No courses necessary, no new soft synths necessary. Uh, this is the technique that I have used. It's a technique that I still use. Um, it's super effective. And today we're going to do it together because that makes uh, everything better. Um, feel free as I am walking along to leave a comment. Um, I will be happy to address them and answer any questions you might have. So uh, let's get to it here. I'm going to share uh, Ableton. Ableton is what I use to do most of my sound design and uh, teach a lot here. And I think it's a great place for you to start if you are getting into sound design. So uh, this is the technique, friends. We are going to rebuild somebody else's work. We're going to work backwards. So when you have, and this works in any software, by the way, when you have a... Uh, when you have a, mm, when you have like, let me gather my thoughts. Um, when, when you have, uh, yeah, I see. Okay. So when you have um, a piece of software, it's going to come with a ton of presets, and those presets are uh, built by professionals. This is what they do for a living. So they. They do a pretty decent job. And today we're going to build uh, on Wavetable. And Wavetable comes with a ton of presets. And in Ableton, if you click on one of these, it's going to demo that for you. So uh, you can kind of go through and see what is working for you, what you think is the most interesting. Um, but I actually picked these two sounds today. So the first is called Rich Mallet. It sounds like this. Um, and the second is small jars. It sounds like this. It's got an interesting time synced thing happening. So and when I listened to that, I was like, man, how do we get that rhythm? I got to fix that. So uh, that's how we do it. Uh, we build it now. We have to make it a really seamless process, right? So here are some tips that are going to help you do this quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new MIDI channel, and I'm going to add a wavetable to it. Now, when I do that, at the bottom of my screen, I've got these A and B tabs. Now, if you don't, that's because you need to go ahead and enable it over here in the bottom right, and just click B. Now what's going to happen is I can easily toggle back and forth between these two sounds. So here's my preset. And here's default wavetable. Now we're going to make that even easier. If we enter into key mapping mode, which you can do quickly by pressing Command K, um, and just map any key on your keyboard. I always use the number seven uh, because it's just what I've gotten used to using. Now every time I hit seven on my keyboard, you're going to notice I'm toggling back and forth. And the reason this is helpful is it's easy for me then to play one sound, hit seven, and play another sound. So we try and keep things uh, pretty simple here. Now, let's go ahead and use our ears a little bit. So when you hear this, or when I hear this, I'm kind of like, OK, this is a metallic sound. It's a short sound. And there's more than one octave happening. And I'm just kind of, this is something I've been able to do just from the years of doing it. But when you're listening, you want to try and identify some things, right? Now, I always like to start with the amp envelope. And at the end of the stream, I'm going to link a video below where I talk about this in detail, because I actually think it's the most important part of any synth. So I'm going to go ahead and try and mimic the amp envelope from Rich Mallet in my own wavetable. So right here, this is where the amp envelope is. This controls your volume over time. So it's got no attack, a very short decay, and it comes down to zero. So we're just going to go ahead and mimic that. We'll drop this down and hit seven now just to toggle it over. And let's listen. Okay. 
maybe a little bit longer. And we'll test it. Yep, there we go. So we have successfully mimicked uh, the shape of the sound, which is the first place to start. Cool, now a tactic that they're using here is they are actually, you'll see when I hit a key here, this uh, wavetable is shifting all the way across and back down. And the reason that that's happening is the sound designer was trying to give it a bit of a punch, wanted to make it a little bit poppier at the beginning. So we're going to emulate that. And by the way, we will eventually move these wavetables. But for now, we want to try and get everything in place before we do that. So we're going to take our envelope two and we'll have it mimic uh, the amplitude envelope here. But we want our wavetable to move over time. So if we click right here and add a little bit of envelope to our wavetable, do you hear how much punch that got it? It was like it went from this to this. I mean, that's like a whole different sound already, and we've barely done anything. Um, and it also is doing the opposite on the opposite wavetable. We'll, so we'll start high and we'll go low. So let's have a listen to that. All right, so I'm going to move this decay down just a little bit more. All right, cool. So we've got some punch now, but it's actually got a little bit more high end than what I'm used to hearing, right? So this is my sound. We'll go back to the original sound now, which you can do quickly just by hitting seven if you mapped it. Yeah, it doesn't have quite as much in the high register, right? So if you listen to this sound, there's not as much buzzing, right? If you listen to this sound, lots of buzzing happening at the top. So. Yep, and check it out. Here it is, filter frequency. So our filter is what we're going to use to pull out some of that high end to make it sound a little bit smaller. And also we're going to use it to add a little bit of punch. So let's start by just sweeping off. A little bit from this top end here. Okay, so that's working for me. And now... Let's add some of this envelope so the filter opens up and we really uh, capitalize on that punch. Okay. So let's make this decay. And I'm going to just decrease the amount here. All right, so now we've gone from a really basic sound to a sound that's got a lot of punch. It's already a ton of fun to play. So at this point, we've really modeled as far as we could possibly go without uh, changing the wavetable. So let's go have a listen over here to what these wavetables are actually doing. So I'm going to isolate oscillator one and play a note so we can just hear. Okay, so Crystal Shifter, I actually think, describes this well. It's got a metallic quality. Um, it's got some upper harmonics, but it doesn't have a lot of upper buzz, right? Um, we could do a whole class on harmonics, so we'll save that for another time. But uh, let's listen to this nylon guitar. Okay, that's a warm sound. So when we put those together, it really fills it out, right? So we're using oscillator one to give us that higher end, upper harmonics. Uh, you know, it's a little bit almost glassy. Um, and then we've got that nylon guitar, and that's giving us something that's a lot more solid. It's a lot closer to the fundamental, um, which is the actual pitch of the note that you're playing. Um, and together, they really have a nice sound. So we're going to go ahead and mimic that on our wavetable as well. So over here, I'll go to harmonics and I will look for, oh, crystal shifter. There we go. Uh, switch over so we can hear mine. Okay. 
so you can hear when uh, this is not nylon strings. I've got that buzz happening here, but I don't have that solid support. It's almost like it's incomplete without it. So here we'll choose instruments and we'll choose nylon string, nylon guitar. Cool. So even this still has a little bit more buzz than what you might want to hear. So we're going to resort back to uh, our preset and see what else is happening. Cool. So you'll notice over here on the left-hand side of the screen, you will see something that says sub, and that is a sub oscillator. And what that means is it's going to have a frequency, an octave below what you are playing, and it's going to add a little bit of support. So gains at six octave at negative one here. So we'll turn our sub on. All right, so literally in the press of one button there, this sound came alive. Let's listen to that before and after. Okay, and with the sub. Yeah, I mean, gorgeous, I love it. Okay, so. What I'm noticing is that in the recreation over here, we're missing something that's causing a bit of detuning. If you listen, so this is my cre recreation. Here's the original. So there's something that's buzzing in the original that is not in mine. So let's see what else we've got going on here. Okay, cool. So in oscillator two, um, we're using the envelope to control this pulse width mod. And what that does, you can see, is it changes the distance on each side of the wave itself. And this comes from the way that uh, square wave modulates. And if you're looking for a really great video about the basics of synthesis, I'm gonna link that in the description as well at the end of the stream so you can uh, have a listen through that. And if you really want it all written down, I've got in the description right now, a link where you can download the quick synth map. And that's gonna have you really comfortable. It's gonna detail and explain all of these things if, if you're a little bit newer here. So we're gonna add a bit of pulse width modulation to ours from this uh, envelope to here. So we'll choose classic, we'll click pulse width mod, and I'm just gonna add some of that. So we're getting that detuning feeling. I'm gonna pull this frequency back just a touch. side. So I think we need a bit more of a release on our synth. So we'll do that. Let's see what they're doing over here. So 431 milliseconds on that guy. What do we have on ours? Oh, not quite that much. All right. Let's see what they're doing here. 1.25. We'll go up a bit here. Check out their second envelope here. 233. So theirs is even faster than ours. So is, when I brought that to K time down, what happened there is all of a sudden it pulled out the higher end enough. Um, that it rounded the sound. Okay. So we're going to add just the final touches here, just a little bit of velocity control to our filter. So that... Uh, it has a little bit uh, of response. 
to our hands, which can always be helpful. And we'll back to our other one. All right, and let's see here. So our last thing I think here is going to be our unison. Now, what unison does is unison takes uh, your note and it doubles it and it detunes it. So it's a really easy way to make your sounds a bit more complex. So here's our original, and we'll bounce over here to the recreation. Yep. All right, friends, that's it. Check that out. That's our recreation. Here's the original. Okay, now it's not enough just to recreate these sounds. We have to use our minds here a little bit and say, what did I actually learn from doing this? Because it's that critical thinking. It's sort of that debriefing afterwards that's going to position you to grow, okay? So here are my key takeaways from this recreation. First of all, when you want to add punch, this particular preset demonstrated three ways to do that, right? The first way is adding envelope to your filter. And you can see it happening. When I hit a key, that filter opens and closes. And that makes it sound as though it's got a little bit of extra punch, right? Way number two is you can use the wavetable position, sweeping open and closed, to create a little bit of extra punch. And the reason for that is you're adding upper harmonics that die out. Um, and way, way number three is you can start at the top and go to the bottom. You can do it in reverse. So those are my key takeaways from this. If you had another key takeaway from this, feel free to pop it in the comments. But it's you know identifying these things that really is going to make a big difference in your sound design skills, just like you're developing some tools for your toolbox. Okay, so we're going to go ahead now and we're going to switch to this preset here called Small Jars. And what's noteworthy about this, I know you can't actually see my hands, is that I'm pressing the key once, and it's kind of getting this bouncing sound, almost like a, like a mallet bouncing on the head of a, a drum, right? And so when I heard that, I was like, I got to figure out how this sound designer did it. Um, and when I opened this up, I was like, wow, not that much going on here, and a good amount of sound, right? So uh, that was like, you know, man, Got to learn how to do that. So let's learn how to do it together. Here's small jars. And I'm just going to drop a default wavetable here, right? So we can rebuild our preset. And for easy toggling purposes, I'll just choose B. And like I said before, we're always going to start with our amp envelope. Now, on our original sound, it comes up and it sort of ends at our regular uh, sustained value here, uh, a little bit lower than the top. So we'll start um, by doing that. And hey, for wavetable, if you click this up arrow, it expands. And that's a lot easier to work with. Hey, crazy, this amp envelope and this amp envelope are basically the same. This has just slightly more release time. Okay, so let's listen to what B sounds like. <laughs> totally different sound, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Now, let's see here. We've also got uh, a different wavetable. We'll come back to that. When I look at what's happening here, what I'm noticing right away is I've got this thing going crazy over here, oscillator one gain, and the LFO turned all the way up. So let's go ahead and recreate that. So oscillator one gain can be found over here. And let's link that to LFO one all the way. And we can create that shape by choosing this triangle wave here and just altering it. I think they actually went this way. And for the rate, we'll choose 16th notes. Okay, and let's have a listen. Oops, didn't switch my presets. All right. Cool, so that's that's what it is, right? It's got da 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 but in the original one, it does more than one rhythm. So we're not quite there yet. Let's revert back here and check out what we've got going on. So we've got this here. It's telling us LFO1, right in this area, rate is being modulated by the amp envelope. And that word modulate just means changed. That's all it means. So I'm going to go ahead and use this amp envelope 
to modulate the rate in mine. So let's see here, 24. We can click rate and we'll go to our amp envelope and we'll just bring this up. So you can hear as I change that, how the rhythm changes. Now, that's all well and good, but the first one still gave us two sounds, right? And this is only giving us one. It's like our first one. So that means we're still missing something. So let's check out what else we have going on here. All right, so global mod is a time control. And basically what a time control does is it changes how fast or slow something goes. So uh, for example, uh, let me go back to this here. So this is my recreation. And as I change the time, you're gonna listen to the rhythm change. Because it's sort of adjusting the rate that the computer is processing the time at. Uh, I'm sure there's some math equation that really details exactly how this works. Um, I just usually manipulate that till I get the result that I want. And in this case, the result that I want is I want to come back from the current rhythm to that 16th note rhythm. Um, and I'm gonna do that by using the amp envelope as well. So as I increase, So when I hit the 60s, you hear it start to go back. I'll turn a metronome on so we can kind of catch that vibe. Okay, so so that's that. We, we did it kind of, but we still need to check out this harmonic series. So this is still basics. And actually, this is a good way to talk about the harmonic series. Switch over to our preset here. So you can hear as I sweep this harmonic series all the way up, you can still hear the fundamental, but you're hearing different notes on top of that. And that's the way that like harmonics on a guitar work or the way that harmonics are, are used on like a trumpet or a, a wind instrument, um, they, they have these uh, overtones. And this is often used uh, even in additive synthesis as well. So I think the original was about 13%. So we'll switch over here. Okay. Yep, 13%. All right, now let's check out the remake. All right, there we go, friends. So what are the key takeaways from this? This is a good question here. But, you know, I took a couple of things away from this. The first thing that I took away from this is that you can actually make a really interesting sound without having to do a ton of work, right? I mean, so we chose a different we chose a different uh, wavetable, right? We chose the harmonic series wavetable, um, but we made this really cool rhythm just by turning the volume up and down with an LFO and modulating that rate. Um, we actually made more than one rhythm when we changed that global time amount. Um, so this is like a technique that you can use on any sound if you're looking to have something that does that. And even if you wanted to have a sound that eventually died out, you know, if I brought this sustain all the way this way. Ah, yep. Okay. But you can really use this to... Um, to create these effects anywhere. So as you redesign and recreate these things, you're putting tools in your back pocket to succeed. Now, if you found this video helpful, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Um, in a couple of minutes, I'll post those uh, links that I mentioned 
in the comments below once this is done uh, processing. Friends, thank you so much for joining me today on Sound Design Thursdays. And I will see you guys next week.